Hey guys, welcome back to Feature Film 43. Today, we're talking about secret sequels. And if you haven't figured it out from the title you clicked on, or the little clip I just showed, we're talking about the greatest movie of all time. It's my favorite movie, and the movie that Bruce Willis sacrificed at least two-thirds of his hearing for in this scene. Next time you have a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Thanks for the advice. That's right, today we're talking about Die Hard, so let's get to it. There's a lot of things we can talk about Die Hard and we can debate. Uh, is it the best Bruce Willis movie of all time? Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Yes. Is it a Christmas movie? No. Yes. Is it the best lone wolf survives an attack by a bunch of terrorists in one location movie? Get off my plane. Yes. Heck, is it even the best action film of all time? Yes. We can debate all those questions, and I think we know the answers to those, but today we're going to answer the question, is Die Hard a sequel? Yes. Maybe. Let's find out. So to figure this question out, let's talk about the premise and why Die Hard might be a sequel. So you see, Die Hard is based on a book called Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. The detective in that book's name is Joe Leland, who is also the main character in Roderick's other book, The Detective, which is also made into a film starring Frank Sinatra. So, to follow the thread, The Detective is a book that was made into a film by Frank Sinatra. The sequel to The Detective was Nothing Lasts Forever, which was another book, also penned by Thorpe, which inspired the film Die Hard. So there's the connection. The detective is connected to Die Hard through the source material. But does that make them sequels? The detective stars Old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, as Detective Joe Leland, who is trying to close a case to secure a promotion. The case involves a high-profile gay man being murdered. Joe finds the gay man's ex and really turns up the heat on him. The ex confesses. Didn't you? You hit him! I hit him! Louder! <laughs> Say it I, louder! I killed him! <laughs> and is executed, and Joe gets this feeling that, hey, I got the wrong guy. So he's struggling with corruption. It's a very noir-esque film. He's struggling with corruption inside of himself, corruption inside the police force, and the, his marriage falling apart at the same time. And eventually he finds out, I was right, I got the wrong guy, and he struggles with what he should do with that information. Because if he says that, hey, I got the wrong guy, I made a mistake, he's losing his promotion and is going to be seen as a fraud. So now you have the backstory of where Die Hard came from. Let's answer the question, is it a sequel? My answer to that is yes and no at the same time. When Die Hard was gearing up for production, the company was legally obligated to ask Frank the Sultan of Swoon, Sinatra, to fill the role as John McClane in Die Hard. If Frank would have reprised this role, it would have made the film an actual direct sequel. However, I believe Sinatra's age at the time would have really hindered the action film that we got, and they wouldn't have been able to make the exact same film as the Die Hard that we know today. Since Sinatra was out of the picture and didn't want the role, 20th Century Fox went looking for a new leading man. So they went to Schwarzenegger, they went to Stallone, and they both turned down because they couldn't fit into the air vents. And actually Clint Eastwood had the rights to this book before 20th Century Fox ever wanted to make a movie out of it. And he was planning on starring in it in the early 80s, and that fell through. So they went with a relatively small time singer. And 
TV and comedy film actor, the 33-year-old Bruce Willis, and the rest is history. So if you look at the source material, I would say the answer is yes. Die Hard is kind of a pseudo-sequel to The Detective, but if you look at the actual films themselves, I don't think that's true at all. Both of the main characters, Joe Leland and John McClane, have similar characteristics. They kind of uh, shirk off authority. Is that clear? We don't want your help. I've got a hundred people down here and they're covered with glass. Glass? Who gives a shit about glass? Who the f*** is this? They do what's right, even though it could cost them their job or life, and they have a very strong intuition of when a situation is going to turn south. We see this in The Detective when Joe Leland knows that he has the wrong guy, and we also see it in Die Hard when he gives Hans Gruber an unloaded gun, knowing that this is probably not a good guy that I want to trust. Oops. No bullets. We see that intuition coming through, and so the characters have similar traits, but the thing that these two movies have going against them are what genre they fall in and how the events in the films are portrayed. So when we're talking about genre, I'm not really saying that two films that are sequels to each other and the same franchise can have different genres. If we look at First Blood compared to Rambo 2, or Evil Dead versus Evil Dead 2, or even any of the films in the Fast and Furious franchise, movies and their sequels don't have to fall in the same genre, but they tend to. But if you watch these films as a film one and two in a franchise, the tonal shift would be quite jarring. Um, the Detective was marketed as the most adult mainstream film released whenever it was released. It dealt with homophobia of the 1960s and extramarital affairs and police corruption that would kind of feel out of place in a Die Hard film. Likewise, John McClane's quips and the action set pieces of Die Hard will go very staunchly against the gritty street feel of the detective. Attention, whoever you are, this channel is reserved for emergency calls only. Oh, shit, lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? And talking about how Die Hard was shot, it stands very different to how other films in the franchise and other action films in general are shot, where they take the focus off the main character and put it on side characters like Al Pal and the main villain Hans Gruber. Contrasting that in The Detective, our main focus is Joe. We focus on his marriage and we get his backstory with his wife. A lot of the movie is devoted to that. We get a focus on the murderer once we find out who that is, but even when we're focusing on the murderer or in his backstory, we're focusing on how that affects Joe in the present. We don't get kind of the vignettes off to the side focusing on any of the villains or any of the side characters. This is not how Die Hard was shot. Um, we see things in the movie Die Hard that John McClane never sees. Things that affect people outside of his sphere of living, essentially. Seeing these things outside of John's perspective gives us a view of the bigger picture as a whole, and we kind of lose that who done it because we already knew who did it. So, essentially, Die Hard is an action film through and through. We're not going for that noir genre in how it's shot and trying to figure out what's really going on. We know what's going on. We know where Engel is, kill the bad guys, and that separates these two movies immensely. So, is Die Hard a sequel to The Detective? I would say spiritually, yes. No matter what, they're going to be tied together through the literature material. Um, they're going to be tied together forever in that regard. In actuality, I would say no, even though Thorpe changed his genre when he was writing one book to the other, the tonal shift between these two movies and the genre shift, I think, is too far apart to actually call them sequels. If we're taking source material into consideration, John McClane's next outing, Die Hard 2, was based on a book by Walter Wanger called 58 Minutes. Live Free Die Hard was based on an article written by John Carlin in Wired magazine called Farewell to Arms, and A Good Day to Die Hard was, well, it just wasn't a very good movie. 
So instead of calling Die Hard a sequel to The Detective, I think it's more apt to look at it as John McClane is Joe Leland's little brother. The little brother that keeps getting into trouble over and over and over again. Oh man, I can't believe this. Another basement, another elevator. How can the same shit happen to the same guy twice? And his life experiences are drawing from all these different places. So that's the video, guys. Let me know what you think. Does having Die Hard source material be a sequel to another movie's source material make Die Hard a sequel to that movie? Yippee Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? This last one's gonna take a miracle. It's Christmas, Theo. It's the time of miracles, so be of good cheer. And are there any other films out there that are secret sequels or possible secret sequels to other movies that you want me to cover? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Happy trails, Hans.